Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are joining Yegor Kerman on his year-long journey into boredom as he orbits the moon as part of Project Lifeboat to test the effects of microgravity on Kerbals in extended stays. Uh, currently, he is doing an inclination change uh, with the moon, trying to bring his inclination down to zero, which due to the architecture of RP0 is not zero inclination. It's about uh, 28 degrees inclination. In, although it will display as zero. Anyway, that's neither here nor there, nor something I totally realized until after this burn was done. Uh, doing some fuel balancing and some other technical aspects, realized that the power draw on this station is uh, way more than I had initially anticipated. We are not able to run both of our radiators at full capacity, so it will require the addition of an additional module. Also to correct the fact that this has no control over its own thrusters without the attached capsule. We're going to have to send something up to control it and to add the additional power that we're going to need to run the station. So after all this is done and fuel balancing, we're heading back to the launch pad. All right, SAS on, uh, throttle set to full, relative inclination is down, ignition. It in. We go on ahead and slowly inch off the pad. All right. So, uh, per usual, we'll just be warping through most of this. Uh, no real point in making you watch the 90,000th uh, RA-9A launch. Shit. Come on, damn it. Fight it, fight it, fight it. Uh, amazingly enough, we're able to do this on one engine. Holy crap. Well, if this can get us to orbit... Without throwing our relative inclination off that badly. Uh, <laughs> why are the RL-10s the jankiest engine we have? <laughs> I, yeah, I'll say, I don't think we've seen too many failures out of the... Uh, you know, these are the RL-10s, not the RD. Did I say RD-10? I don't remember. Yeah, the... RD-275, I expected a much higher failure rate than this, but I guess we are using these a lot and should therefore expect... But man, this is like one out of every five flights. We're getting a fucking failure out of these engines. Mm. But the RCS system is able to hold our attitude, so we're not going to abort. Uh, Yegor is not in any dire need of this uh, computing system and this extra power generation systems, but I'm sure that they would make his quality of life a little better. He can actually get out of the command pod and start manning the station proper, which I'm sure he would really like to do, start his mission in earnest, but, you know. <laughs> Alright, okay. 
almost there. All right, shut down. 187 by 148. Not, uh, not too shabby. And we do have about four kilometers per second the delta V in the power couple itself, but I was hoping that we could kind of use some of that as fuel reserves to bring out to the moon, but uh, it looks like that dream has died. So we're just going to go ahead and start planning our maneuver node. Well, we're, uh, we're probably just going to have to roll with that. The inclination isn't uh, too terrible, I guess. And we will just roll with this busted ass uh, upper stage. Uh, as long as we can, I suppose. What contract do we get? Oh, vessel complete. Not an actual contract. That's fine too. That can go away. And what are what are you? That's not even remotely the way we're supposed to be facing flight computer. Well, this would be the very first time we've attempted to limp something along when it's got a busted engine as far as the transfer stage goes. Alright, light them up. And fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it. Oh, we're losing it. We're losing it. Yeah, spin stabilization doesn't work when you can't face your node. Oh no, god. All right, I think we've lost it. Shutting down. Ah, crap. Oh, we can't stage. We don't have a connection. Brack. All right, I promised myself I wasn't going to use time warp to cheat and get rid of my rotation that way. We're just going to try something a little different here. Face to the node. I don't know how well this is work will work or what kind of uh, RPM we're gonna have to see for this to be effective. Vapor and feed lines. Well, <laughs> not bad. It is kind of working. I mean, yeah, we're we're a little off our axis, but we're going. <laughs> Unbelievable what a little bit of ingenuity will do. 
turn stability control off so it doesn't try to inhibit the spin. Although we're probably going to see a failure on this uh, engine also because it's going to be getting pushed well past its burn time. Yeah, it's got another five minutes of fuel left. I'm scared to go into physics time warp uh, because I'm sure this thing will just tear itself apart. But, um... I cannot believe this is working. Holy shit. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm not going to make you guys watch this as absolutely brilliant as it may be. It's on the dark side, and I'm sure you've gotten the, uh, the gist of it, so enjoy some uh, time warp here, fellas. All right, we're showing a loss of thrust on our one remaining engine, indicating that it is probably going to fail at any minute now. Yeah, we're getting about 35 kilonewtons out of it. And there it goes. We have hit full failure. Go ahead and turn our stability control back on and stage away. Light up our asteris. Asteris. And now we can try to cancel out some of this roll. We don't need it anymore. Yeah, saying our burn time is up to 14 minutes. We're going to be a little late. All right, <laughs> we do not have an intercept. We are on e escape velocity. What the, what the hell happened? Oh, oh, why wasn't I paying attention? Great. All right, well, what's that gonna cost us? Another 148. Well, damn it. And that brings us around the wrong way. All right, I'm going to fidget with this node. I'll pick you guys up in a second. I don't believe for a second that that's not going to get us uh, an intercept. So instead of just waiting for it, we're just going to go for this. Why did Mechjeb lie to us like that? See? An intercept. And we're going to take it. Even though it's absolutely horrendous. Turn our RCS system off so it doesn't mess with things. And then try to set up for our alignment on the plane. Alright, uh, no real reason why any of this needs to be at regular speed, so um, 
I'm actually thinking that this is a good place to leave us for the episode. Oh my god. 500 meters per second. Ugh. So gross. How botched this mission is becoming. It's awesome how absolutely terrible things become when you need accuracy. <laughs> Those Apollo guys, man. Dang it, NASA. Three oh three. Uh, <laughs> skimming the surface. All right. Anyway, <laughs> next time the rather haphazard alignment and docking of something already in orbit after a transfer, a skill I desperately need to work on. So uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. I do appreciate it. And uh, thanks for helping me get to above 80 subs now. I mean, that's so awesome. I'm absolutely flattered and uh, humbled that at least 80 people think that my crappy curbling is worth watching enough to click a subscribe button and get notified every time more of my crappy curbling comes along. So thank you to all of you. You guys are amazing and awesome and I, um, <laughs> I'm really bad at compliments. So <laughs> there's that. Thank you. Honestly. Um, this is really fun. And I really enjoy doing it, and I really hope that you guys are having as much fun watching me goof off to this as uh, I am having goofing off to this. And I hope you will continue to hang out with me into the future. Uh, as always, I'm always open to suggestions and criticisms and things like that, so tell me whatever you want to say down in the comments. Thanks a lot, everybody. I'll see you next time.